It's the biggest change that the Innova has ever seen since it was launched, what? 15, 16 some years ago and this video will tell you everything that you need to know about the Innova or well everything that we know about the new generation Innova that's coming very soon, late November, early December but before we actually do get into the video, remember hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell really hard after you hit that subscribe button as well to stay updated and tuned to all the Power Drift stuff that we put out on YouTube for all of you. Right, so before we actually tell you what the car is all about mechanically, let's talk about the name. It's going to be called, ring, 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 the Innova High Cross. Now, it's a good play on words with the Toyota High Rider or the Urban Cruiser High Rider, which of course is the rival to the Creta and the Seltos and all of that. But the first gen Innova was called just the Innova. So, what is the formula for an Innova. What's the old one? What's the new one? Let's talk about the old one first. It's pretty simple. It's not E is equal to MC square. It's A square plus B square is equal to C square. Something that everybody can understand. Take a nice MPV like van like body that's not as glitzy and glamorous as your state-of-the-art modern SUV but everybody seems to like it. It's a palatable design. It's likeable, right? Take that body, put it on a chassis, body on frame construction. Take a diesel engine that everybody likes and put it in as well. First gen car, 2.5 diesel, manual gearbox only. Second gen gets a 2.4 diesel and a 2.8 diesel. Eventually, that 2.8 would be thrown out and just a 2.4 with a little bit more horsepower added into the mix. But the big change in the second generation as compared to the first generation was the introduction of that automatic gearbox and that meant a lot more people could go and buy an Innova because a lot more people who wanted to self-drive one now could actually self-drive it because it is rather big and lumbering around town and a lot of people didn't want to have a manual option. Petrols of course were also available but not many people went and bought one. In fact, they are quite the rarity on Indian streets. So what's this new formula going to be? Well, it's actually going to be a little more complex. It is going to be E equal to MC square because there are two major, major, major changes. First one, no more diesel. Diesel is finished. It's gone from the Innova. It's not going to happen. I can just imagine all those thousands and thousands and thousands of fleet operators gasping their heads in panic, wondering what they're going to do. But fret not. We have all said hybrid is the new diesel. And that's what Toyota is really going for. So, under the skin, it's going to have the same hybridized system or the hybrid electrical package as the high rider gets. Remember, that is made here in India completely. So, it's sort of cost effective. But that 1.5 liter three cylinder engine that the high rider gets isn't going to be making it to the Innova because obviously the Innova is a larger and heavier car. So, what are you going to get? A two liter engine. And I wonder, is it the same that the Camry gets? Because that 230 something horsepower package, well, that is quite powerful. The diametric opposite of what the High Rider is, not really that powerful. Oh, and for the first time ever, the Innova now goes front wheel drive, which means no more crazy burnouts. But the enthusiasts might cry. The normal people who actually want to go and use an Innova might not, because what front wheel drive means is that the rear floor is going to be absolutely flat which means more space and more space is what the Innova will get because this is a brand new platform as well well brand new for the Innova it is the TNGA or the Toyota new global architecture platform or to be precise the TNGA-C it's essentially the same platform that the global Corolla today is based on and that means it's going to have a little bit more space. It's in fact going to be a longer car, both in terms of wheelbase and in terms of overall length. We think it's going to be about 4.7 meters long. And that means generally a lot more space on the inside for passengers. I can't wait to go and sleep in the back seat of one of these. And talking about seats, it of course is going to have the bent seat option and the much loved and adored captain seats in the middle row as well. Obviously, three rows of seats. I mean, duh, come on, it's an Innova. 
What else will it get? Well, we think a whole bunch of tech for the first time as well. So big floating infotainment screen. We think it's going to get a nice digital instrument cluster, 360 degree parking camera. Toyota already has that tech, so why not? Heads up display, Toyota already has that tech too. So why not that thrown in as well? And cool seats, we know that tech exists. Wishful thinking to have cool seats in the middle row as well. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed, fingers really crossed. But what you're also going to have probably is that big, massive glass panoramic roof that the high rider gets. Now that's going to be nice because it's going to make the Innova a lot more airier than what it already is or what it already will be. So, closing arguments. Let's end this now. Yes, of course, the big negative, the big, big, big negative, unless you see all those new changes as negatives also, I don't think that is though. But the big negative will be that the new Innova will be even more expensive than what the car already is. So what's it going to top out at? 35 lakhs? 30 lakhs? We don't really know at showroom prices. We'll have that when it launches later this year or maybe early next year, but it is going to definitely be a lot more expensive a car. Is that really going to matter though? Because everybody who buys an Innova wants an Innova. It's one of those cars like the Honda City or the Camry or the E-Class. Everybody who wants one just wants the newest one. And they're going to keep buying them forever and ever and ever. Thank you so much for watching. This is our little quick first look on what we can expect on the new Toyota Innova. A lot more of this coming your way because as more and more data sort of leaks out, creeps out, we're going to make more of these videos for the, all the new cars coming out by the end of the year or early into next year. Thank you so much for watching once again. See you soon.